It's closing day. And every time I have a closing, I listen to this song, Billionaire. It makes me happy. closings today it's an awesome awesome day headed to my first one I'm just gonna jam out for a little bit come away to my closings a different city Hey family, Chauncey Fam here, Realtor Dallas Fort Worth area, Family Realty Group. Hey, um, it is a sunny Thursday morning and I am off to my first closing of the day. I have three. Um, this one's at Republic Title and I just figured I'd do a little video um, about title work and like what it means and um, what it means to actually have title done and, and have um, an owner's policy and a lender's policy. So come inside, um, see around for a little bit with me and then we'll talk a little bit about title. Come on. Okay, sorry, I lied. I said I would get you guys some footage while we were like inside of the title company at the closing. False. Uh, we got everything signed, got out of there, and now I am on to drive all the way to Fort Worth, Richardson, to do another closing. So I got a little bit of time to shoot a video for you guys and talk. So let's talk title policies and like what that is, because you're gonna hear that so much when you go on to buy a house. So, okay, you found your perfect house, you've put in the offer, your lender is working the deal, and you've got to take earnest money to the title company. So earnest money, basically once your offer has been accepted on a house, um, part of the contract is an earnest money deposit. That shows the seller that you've got a little bit of skin in the game so that you don't get three, four weeks down the road, it's almost time to close, you get cold feet and you say, you know what, I ain't doing this. I don't want to buy this house, I'm freaked out. Um, that earnest money deposit then goes to the seller. So of course, if you put up $3,000, $5,000, you're gonna be less likely to walk away from that deal knowing that you're gonna lose that money. So that's what an earnest money deposit is, and you go and deposit it at the title company. A lot of people are confused as hell. Hell, honestly, I was when I first started real estate. I didn't know what the purpose of the title company was, what they did, who they were, and why You know, I had to take them earnest money and, and what, role they played in the transaction so ultimately and, and to oversimplify it i'm sure it's going to be some title people out there that are like no we do more than that but to, to simplify it they do a couple of different things number one they act kind of as the intermediary in the transaction um so if there are any funds that need to be held like an earnest money deposit instead of giving that to the seller it goes to the title company and they hold it in something called escrow um so escrow is and you've heard that word a lot. Um, it's basically like an account that a neutral party controls rather than the parties in the transaction. So um, that if anything happens and, and there's any type of um, you know litigation that needs to go on, any um, type of arbitration that needs to go on, then the title company can kind of determine you know who those funds go to and and what's fair in that regard so that's one thing that they do is they kind of act as the intermediary another thing they do is they actually hold the closings so when you close on your house you normally do it at a title company in texas in other states you do it at attorney's offices but in texas you actually do it at the title company so that's another one of their functions but ultimately guys what they do is they provide title insurance so that when a property transfers from one owner to another owner. The title company, um, they dig and dig and dig and go all the way back to the, um, the inception of that property, the land that the house was built on, everything, and just make sure that every time that property was transferred from one person to another, that it was transferred free and clear. So that when it's transferred to you, someone can't come and say, well, you know what? This was my great granddaddy's land and it was left to my mom and then my mom died, but she didn't have anything in her will. So then by default, it came to me and you have a house on it. That title insurance, um, basically they go back and they dig and just try to make sure that there's nothing that can pop up that will give any other party then you claim of that property. 
Um, so they want to make sure that you don't owe any creditors money that may have liens um, on the property. Uh, because if so, then you know you sell it to the next person or you buy that house and the seller had a lien uh, for you know a paint job that they didn't pay for, then technically, you know that that person that had that mechanic lien on that property, they kind of got a stake in your house. So the title company just ensures that no one has a stake in the home except for you and they actually create an insurance policy. Um, it's in the amount of how much you spent on the house so in case anything actually like slipped through the cracks and there happens to be someone that does have a um, stake in the home for some odd reason, then they pay you um, for the amount of the house so you can get out of it and give it to the person that it's due. So it protects you guys. So there are a lot of things sometimes that'll hold up um, transactions. I've had some, for instance, um, I was the listing agent on one and the seller didn't let me know, but he had some, some issues with some creditors in the past and actually I don't even know that he knew but at any rate they put liens against his name um, so that when a title company ran a title search against him it popped up and before he could sell the property to the buyers the title company had to have a release of those liens from his creditors because here's a quick little fun tip for you guys did you know that creditors cannot actually put a lien on a property if it is your homestead meaning it is your primary residence. They can't do it. They can't collect on it. They can't They can't really do anything besides tie up the property and give everyone a headache. It's a tactic that they use to try to collect. So um, let's say, you know, you owe, you, you bought a, a car from someone, I don't know, and you, and you didn't end up paying for it. Um, you end up giving it back to them, but they still want the money for the car. They can actually file against your name a lien um, or it's called an abstract of judgment um, against you. And so when you go to try to sell your house, that abstract of judgment would have to be cleared before the title company will issue a free and clear title insurance policy to the buyer. And most cases, lenders will not give someone a loan unless it has clear title. Like they're not gonna loan you two or three or $400,000 on a house that someone else could ultimately come and claim stake on. So um, it's, it's really a big deal and it, it protects you. But a lot of people get frustrated because sometimes, you know, there are things that have to be cleared and, and people don't understand why. This is why. Um, it is in your best interest to just be patient, wait on those items to be cleared so that uh, once you assume ownership of that property, it is yours free and clear. So um, I hope that helps a little bit um, on title. And title was always one of those things that when I first started real estate, I didn't understand. Um, I would get these title commitments, you know, at right before closing and I didn't understand how to read them. So I really, really want people to, to understand the importance of title insurance, um, how it is actually an asset to your transaction. It protects you um, from a lot of issues that can arise if you don't get it. So even if you're a cash buyer and you're not required to have title insurance, because you're not, um, only people that have loans are required to have title insurance, make sure you still get it. It's a good thing. Like, go on and pay for it. Um, which that's another thing. Um, it costs something. I mean, it's it's an insurance uh, on a property. So there is a premium that has to be paid. And in Texas, it's typically the assumption that the seller is going to pay for title. That is just the assumption. Um, if you're in a multiple offer situation, then, you know, to make the deal a little bit sweeter, you can offer to pay title um, as the buyer. But in Texas, typically the seller pays it. Um, that's just by default what happens on the the um, contracts. So if you're a seller, um, one of the things in closing costs that you can expect to pay is title insurance. If you're a buyer, um, that is something that, you know, by default, your realtor is probably going to put on the contract for the seller to pay for. But if you're in a multiple offer situation, guys, that's a really good one that you can use as a negotiations tool um, to uh, offer the seller that you will pay for. Because title insurance, um, it's not different per title company. It is regulated by the state. And I believe it's like points it's like 0.64% of the sell price of the house. It's somewhere around there, but it's a percentage, a very small percentage. It's less than 1%. It's like I said, I think it's like 0.64% of um, the sell price of the home is what 
the title policy cost. And so if you're a seller, keep that in mind because you know, calculate that. If you're selling your house for $300,000, do $300,000 times 0.64%. Um, and that is ultimately what the title policy is gonna cost that you're gonna have to pay for the buyer. So again, just summary title policy, guys. You wanna get it, you need to get it. Your lender requires you to get it. If you got enough cash to buy a house, still get it. It's a big deal. And so um, I'm gonna grab me a sandwich real quick and then head on over to Fort Worth and do another closing. Bye, family.